We start with Maricopa County Superior Court Judge Christopher Curry. He's on your ballot, he's under attack, and he wants to defend himself. Judge Curry, welcome to Sunday Square Off. Good morning. Thank you for having me on this morning. Now, I want to start with a three-point civics lesson on why you and about four dozen other judge colleagues who voters never elected are on the ballot. So here are the three points for folks. Judges are appointed by the governor based on recommendations of a judicial commission. After their appointment, judges are on the ballot every four years. Voters decide whether to retain or reject them. Did I get that right? Absolutely. And Perfectly correct. What you're doing right now, which is basically campaigning for your seat, that's pretty unusual, isn't it? It absolutely is. Um, uh, judges on our court, because we are retained on a merit-based system, it is very unusual for there to be a campaign. In fact, we are not permitted to campaign unless someone actually affirmatively attacks us and uh, starts a campaign uh, to have us be unseated. And I checked, you, you, you do have a campaign website. Uh, we're not getting any mailers. Uh, how much are you campaigning? Very little, very little. Um, this came at, uh, the campaign against me came out of the uh, came out of the blue candidly uh, last week and uh, quite frankly uh, there is there is no time to really start a campaign uh, to defend myself so I'm just trying to get the word out and to uh, let people who are going to be voting on me know about uh, about my records and to know who I am. All right. And so this resulted from your ruling on Prop 208. Uh, the Maricopa County Democratic Party, other groups are urging voters to reject you because you struck Prop 208 from the ballot back in July. The Supreme Court later reinstated it. So that is the focus. Given that, what's your strongest argument for being retained by voters? You know, I... Uh... The strongest argument is really my entire political, uh, not, not political, my entire non-political uh, basis uh, history on the bench. Governor Brewer appointed me in 2010. And since she appointed me in 2010, I've heard thousands of cases, issued thousands of rulings in those cases. And when, as, as a result of that, my record, my body of work, I'm proud of it, which is... I have been reversed fewer than five times. Um, I have, uh, I think that shows that I am a judge who actually follows the law as it's written. That's what I interpret my job to be, and that's what I've done. Politics don't enter into my rulings. They never have. Okay, your critics have objected to the substance of your ruling and the tone. And this is it's, it's a one-issue campaign, really. So let's go into that. You relied on a 2018 state Supreme Court ruling that threw out the Invest in Ed initiative's first failed attempt to get on the ballot. Yet the current Supreme Court, not much different from two years ago, unanimously rejected your ruling. You said you follow the law. What should that tell voters about how you interpreted the first Supreme Court ruling were you just incorrect uh, you know bram it's uh i I'm in, I'm in a little bit of a tough spot with that um you're correct as far as the supreme court did reverse my ruling um i applied the law as it was written however i can't talk about the case ethically because the supreme court has not issued its ruling they've issued their result but they have an opinion that is pending and judges ethically are prohibited from talking about the substance of a law if there is a chance that it could be, uh, it, if it could affect the decision. So I can say this, I can say that politics had absolutely no play in my decision, number one. And number two, I can say that um, my decision, and it's out there, it is a public record, applied the legal standard that was put in place in 2018 verbatim over and over. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go down this road for just a little bit and see what you, you sure. can say, because... I'll answer to the extent uh, I ethically can. I hope you appreciate I that. I think the, the opinion of many, including many in the legal community, was that you over-applied what the court said in 2018 in really vastly expanding what should be in the 100-word summary 
uh, of, an, of an initiative that goes on the petitions folks sign to put it on the ballot. And that was the issue, your issue, what was in or not in the 100-word summary. Two years ago, the Supreme Court said, hang on, you guys are just wrong here. The information you put out there was wrong. You just wanted more information, and in reading it, it sounded like you wanted the information that you wanted in that 100-word summary. You know, Bram, I, I, again, we're getting to areas where when a court, when the Supreme Court, when a, an appellate court goes ahead and reverses a trial court judge, um, there's many reasons they can do it. Reasonable minds can differ about what is required. Uh, the legal standard can be clarified. The legal standard can be changed. But in the end, I applied the law as it was written here by the Arizona Supreme Court in 2018. It was not like it was something that had been vetted for years and years after that. It was uh, it was a case in which I did apply the law. And that's, I'm really at the point where I ethically can't say more until that decision comes out. I'd love to talk with you about it. I really, really would. Okay, I think let's go in a different direction because beyond the substance that you're referring to was the tone, and I think you probably know this, in particular, a footnote that was on this opinion, which doesn't appear to have uh, anything to do with the actual law. And I'll read it to our viewers. When a teacher specifically instructs a student exactly how to complete a math problem, and when the student disregards the instruction and does the math problem incorrectly on a future test, should the student receive a passing grade? The simple answer is no. That appears to be an analogy you, were, you, were, you wrote to explain your your reasoning, yet to many people, that came off as extremely condescending and even a cheap shot at the educators who put this initiative forward. What's your response to that? You know, I, I, I you know, to the extent that the tone was not what, uh, to, that the people took umbrage with the, uh, the tone of the decision, you know, I do, I do apologize for that. However, as a judge, I need to be very clear about a couple of things. Um, when you're writing a decision as a judge, the first thing you need to do is you need to address all the issues that are before you. The second thing that you do is you need to apply the law as it's written. I did that. The third thing that you need to do is you need to write your decisions clearly. You need the litigants and you need the parties to understand what the ruling is and why. And then what you need to have happen is the uh, you need to make sure that the reviewing court has is able to understand it. And then the final thing that you have here is you have a window of time in which you can rule. Um, the window of time in which you can rule in these election cases are much, much shorter. If there were some rough edges that could have been polished off with a couple of months. Uh, most In most cases, judges have 60 days to do this. That's fine. The, the time window we have here is was better described in days and hours. Um, again, was that the, so was uh, that was that just we, frustration speaking? Because the rest of your your opinion is fairly respectful. And that kind of comes out of nowhere. Was that frustration? Was it was it the fact you may not like the idea of this initiative? No, not at all. Not at all. Po politics played nothing into it. The substance uh, played nothing into it. Really, what uh, the footnote, if anything, was is that there was a. Oh boy, I start talking about the decision, and I can't do that. Um, uh, I, I hope you'll bear with me, Bram. I, I, I've got this. just like 30 seconds more, Judge. I hate to do this, but that's the world no, of TV. No, go ahead. Uh, I, I really, I'm going to have to end it there. I think you've made the point about the, the issue, talking about the decision. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I hope uh, viewers got some help there because it is tough to, to cast your, your vote on a judge. Um, uh, best wishes and good luck in the, uh, in the vote. All righty. Thank you. Thank you, sir.